Uktan, Zentar, Orotaku, Kurajaku. These names are spoken by Chimerans with wonder, reverence, and fear. They are the mighty apex predators of Chimere on forest, prairie, and sea. Only the largest titanosaurs are not on their menu. All are giants, but at comparable dimensions to the cachalot, Old Bull Kurajaku are by far the largest theropod to ever evolve on Earth or Chimere. Despite these outsized dimensions and unequivocal dominion, it was not long ago in geological terms that they were small, unassuming predators. Their common ancestor lived around 20 million years ago and was around the size of a grizzly bear. They were generalist surf and turf hunters, barrel-chested and armed with terrifying claws, feeding on fish, mammals, crocodiles, and young dinosaurs. Even at this early stage, they had many of the features that made their giant descendants so successful. Their senses were particularly keen, especially sight and hearing. Although all Chimeran Megaraptorans invested in these two senses, this clade takes these traits to the extreme. Their ears were asymmetrical, with the right ear being higher than the left, and a ruff of feathers further helped direct sound. Their vision is often compared to eagles and hawks. Although strongest during the day, they can see at night, and seeing in the ultraviolet spectrum gives them many advantages. Thick pads on their feet also aided both in sensing movement and communication. These pads also afforded them moderate tremor sense, or echolocation. With each step they could feel imperfections in the ground. But it is invaluable while chasing prey to know where to place your next step. At half a ton this feature was helpful, but critical once they reached larger sizes. They were also highly intelligent, surpassed among dinosaurs by only a few clades of avians and firebirds. Their bones were quite hollow, or pneumatized, yet robust and surprisingly strong, which made them both agile and sturdy. Although it took them a decade or more to reach adulthood, often living 50 to 70 years put this high intelligence to good use, and many years of experience enhancing their knowledge of their environment and a curiosity that made them perfect candidates to undergo an adaptive radiation 13 million years ago when Chimere stabilized after the mass extinction. It wasn't long before they got large. Other Megaraptorans reached the known world first, but by the time these giants arrived, they dominated wherever they went. Having a long, independent childhood meant that each had many years to familiarize themselves with a new environment before they grew into rulership. This highly adaptive trait was invaluable when colonizing new territory. In the known world today, there are four species of robust monarchs. Most basal is the Zentar, being essentially a scaled-up version of the clade's common ancestor. At 35 to 40 feet long and weighing 6 to 10 tons, these barrel-chested adults are comparable in size to T-Rex. They are the apex predator of the forests in the western and northern continents, with adults hunting a wide range of mammalian and dinosaurian megafauna. Like their common ancestor, they are comfortable in wetlands and quite capable swimmers, although they usually choose to establish themselves in conifer forests. They employ the classic killing method of Megaraptorans, using a bite to catch prey and claws up to 30 inches long to dispatch it. A pair of conical fang-like teeth, a trait found in all robust monarchs, helps them hold on, and their third digit is opposable and lacks a claw. This strong pseudo-thumb is used to withdraw the talons as they dig in and out, each impaling multiple times at different angles to maximize organ damage and internal bleeding. Once they establish a hold, success is usually swift and final. If they don't manage to establish a hold, they will usually back off, especially if their target is larger or boasts especially strong defenses. They are assassins, not pugilists or brawlers. But that's not to say they go for easy prey. They readily tackle Chimera's most dangerous game, including giant sloths, titanosaurs, rhinoceros, paleoloxodon, and giant parxosaurs. But if they don't succeed in setting up a confident first strike, they would rather wait and set up a more favorable situation. Most prey know that intimidating them when they are noticed is wiser than charging, for these seemingly timid predators will quickly employ their claws with surgical precision, indifferent to the risks if put in a corner.
There is minimal sexual dimorphism in the Zentar. Males have more extravagant horns, and females tend to be larger. Although this is more because males endure more direct competition and general pressure from older bulls while growing up, and females can settle for suboptimal territory until they reach competitive size, so males have a harder time getting the nutrients they need. Females must be large to defend their territories, meaning that on average, since they have similar pressures but females can often be more adaptable in their territories, the average female is larger. They do not mate for life. Males rarely stay long after mating, and females drive their young away once they reach around the size of a large dog at six to eight months to bulk up to prepare a new nest. While in this small stage they focus on small game, observing their future prey and learning their habits. Juveniles are all leg and their skulls are wedge-shaped, giving them a wide field of vision during this vulnerable stage in their lives, not getting the wide faces and sharp binocular vision until they become adolescent. As was the case with tyrants before them, and indeed other robust megaraptorans, adolescent zentar are the dominant mesopredators in their ecosystem. Although their ungainly legs seem ill-suited for a forest predator, since they often cannot run due to the dense brush, but this serves them better in endurance than speed, and also keeps them above the thicket. They can cover a lot of ground with minimal effort. In fact, this body plan is so efficient that, when times are tough, between 2 and 5% of adults never grow out of it, remaining in this subadult stage indefinitely and thriving as mesopredators, although they rarely end up reproducing with robust adults. This gracile morph is so successful that many populations have a higher percentage of it, especially in contexts where there is not as much game. The most distinct instance of this happening is the Orotaku, top predator of Picardia. Although Picardia is a massive island around twice the size of Madagascar, it still has a fairly reduced average size of herbivores on the mainland. The Orotaku is neotenic. At some point in their evolution, it became advantageous to never reach the robust adult growth stage. They are genetically quite close to their mainland cousins, but remain as teenagers in most aspects, the white ruff that other robust megaraptorans get upon maturity being their main signifier of adulthood. Adults max out at around 25 feet long and weigh 1 to 2 tons. Like the Zentar, the Ortotaku is a solitary terrestrial hunter. They behave much like their giant cousins, but keep the more gracile build. This suits them well in the forests gardened by titanosaurs, keeping the canopy open so that the Ortotaku can see and hear prey with minimal obstruction. Although gracile compared to their mainland kin, compared to their competition on the island, their great size more than establishes them as kings and queens. Unlike the face-biting of tyrants and dromies, and the head-biting of abelosaurids, intraspecific combat between the Orotaku, and indeed all Megaraptorans, is minimal. Most arguments are settled with visual and auditory display. This is likely due to the lethality of their claws. Some face-biting does occur, but there are no records of the Orotaku, or indeed any other Megaraptorans, using their claws in combat with other members of their species. They do not naturally view the Picardian as prey. The people of Picardia note them for their intelligence, curiosity, and endurance. They are considered patrons of secrets, and are regarded more with wonder than fear, although enough have gone man-eater that they know the meat hooks on their arms live up to the name. There are rumors that deep in the interior of Picardia, Orotaku occasionally grow into a robust morph, essentially looking like a melanistic adult zentar, although these reports are unsubstantiated. Perhaps the most famous of this clade, and indeed all chimeran theropods, is the Uktan, great king of the Housy Prairie. Unlike the zentar, which prefers to attack from an ambush, these kings of the prairie are masters of endurance and pursuit predation. Although their favored ungulate and parxosaur prey are usually faster than them, the Uktan can maintain a steady power walk for hours at a time, often running their prey to exhaustion before going in for a quick kill. Their prey ragged and breathless, and the Uktan feeling the same as when they started. Particularly hollow bones and a long springing stride makes them astonishingly efficient travelers. Their vision, keenest of all Megaraptorans, 
allows them to stay on target even if their prey gets a mile or two ahead. This penchant for efficient travel has been a key to their wide distribution. In the known world, they are only found on the Housy Prairie, but this population is a returning diaspora from a species that evolved on the eastern continent. On this vast landmass, larger than Eurasia, the northern half is a vast prairie on which the Uktan evolved, being honed by the harsh climate and competitive ecosystem into being a ruthless and intelligent pursuer. When they returned to the prairies of the known world, they quickly outcompeted the top Megaraturan species there, a giant taro, and are now the unchallenged kings. Their dimensions are comparable to the Zentar, with a slightly leaner bulk countered by a taller build. In many behavioral aspects, however, the Uktan stands out from its cousin. Nowhere is this contrast more clear than in mating and parenting. All other species of Megaraptoran are polygamous, with females being territorial and males being nomadic. The Uktan mate for life, forming monogamous bonds and sharing in the responsibility of hunting and territory defense. Aside from a slightly darker mane and larger horns, females and males are indistinguishable. Forming these long-term bonds has extended to their parenting. Although some offspring are driven from the nest, particularly when times are tough, it is not uncommon for young to remain with their parents well into their teenage years. Sometimes Uktan will aid their parents in the hunt, usually acting as herders since they are less conspicuous and one of the fastest animals on the prairie. But mostly, their job is to remain at the heart of the parents' territory to defend and contain their younger siblings. A daunting job given their intelligence and insatiable curiosity. This shift to a K-selection reproductive strategy has had a major impact on the context of the prairie ecosystem. Since subadult Uktan are not independent hunters, the mesopredator diversity in this ecosystem is much higher than in ecosystems run by other monarchs. They are considered by many to be the most intelligent Megaraptoran, although this reputation may be slightly unfair to the other species, as the Uktan's intelligence is more easily understood by us since they are social and cooperative. Largest and most derived of the robust monarchs is the Kurojaku. A leviathan of legendary proportions, the Kurojaku is by far the largest theropod to ever evolve on Earth or Chimere. Most adult males are between 50 and 65 feet long, and weigh between 12 and 30 tons. Females max out at around 10 tons, as they must take to land to nest. The largest centenarians are in the same size class as a bull sperm whale, reaching 80 feet long and 60 tons in extreme cases. Males can reach such sizes by fully abandoning the land. The Kurojaku has taken the Megaraptoran's comfort in water to a logical conclusion. The robust bones of their ancestors denumatized, making them very dense. They also have thick skin, over a foot thick in the torsos of large adults, which makes them negatively buoyant. Sinking as they do, the Kurojaku is actually a pretty poor swimmer as an adult. A long fluked tail enables them to swim in open water, but the moment they stop kicking and sculling, they immediately sink. At first glance, this seems to make them ill-suited for aquatic life especially since the other robust Megaraptorans are exceptional swimmers. Put in their proper context, however, a much different picture comes into focus. The Kurujaku is a master of shallow waters. Sinking as they do puts them solidly in the substrate. Short legs reduce drag, but the femur is the same length as the legs of their kin, meaning that the caudofemoralis muscles that power the stroke of their tail is still at full strength. With this configuration, they can sprint along the bottom of rivers, lakes, and coastal waters. Powerful kicks amplified by their fluked tail, enabling them to move at a rapid pace. Their sail acts as a keel, keeping them stable as they run. Although not as fast as some of their prey, their endurance is legendary, and keen vision, hearing, and touch allows them to keep tabs on their target, especially those that are easily detected with ultraviolet vision. They typically attack from ambush. Their thin, ostrich-like feathers are host to a species of algae unique to them, and adults are often completely covered with it, which helps them blend into a wide range of seagrass species. The Kurojaku would do well in any prolific shallow-water habitat. 
what makes them so successful in Chimere is the sheer abundance of optimal habitat in the known world. Some make their homes in the rivers and estuaries of Picardia and the Crescent. The Kurujaku is an ecosystem engineer. Their movement alone stirs up sediment and clears debris. And when they intentionally shove, scrape, and pull apart obstacles in their hunting path, they carve channels through Chimere that provide habitat for countless other creatures. The Bakar is much more common in the Seretic wetlands, which are generally too shallow for the Kurujaku, but the people of these wetlands rely on the Kurujaku paths as highways of sorts between villages. With the female's inclination to travel far before settling down, establishing new territory and a food preference built on whatever is available, it should be no surprise that this animal has spread far and dominated numerous habitats. Unlike adults, young are proficient swimmers, facilitating their spread to continents beyond the known world. The most noteworthy habitat, and indeed the one in which the larger males thrive, is the vast inland sea. This body of water, which is many times larger than the Mediterranean, is quite shallow, rarely deeper than a few hundred feet, and usually closer to a hundred. Although there are many reefs, the Kurujaku is most at home in the seagrass meadows, which makes up to 80% of the inland sea floor. Kurujaku can hide among the swaying grass and wait for prey, or run it down, being able to outpace much of their favored prey. Another name for the inland sea is the Sloth Sea, due to the numerous species of sloth that graze in these aquatic meadows. Sea cows and dicynodonts are also abundant, as are desmostylians, the last holdouts of this clade, which has lost their freshwater niches to the likes of the hippopotamus. Strangest and largest of the meadow grazers is the bilirook, a non-therian mammal from the clade otherwise not found in the known world, but common on the eastern continent. Bottom and surface-feeding cetothere whales are also in abundance. There are also mosasaurs and sharks, dolphins and seals, and numerous species of large fish. All are on the menu of the kurujaku. As you will no doubt notice, the kurujaku bears a strong resemblance to the spinosaurs, particularly Spinosaurus, the clade's namesake. These dinosaurs went extinct in the known world during the dynastic extinction, when an arid period greatly reduced their habitat and finally pushed over the edge by competition with crocodiles and semi-aquatic abelosaurids. Some elements of the Kurujaku are inspired by Duane Nash's unconventional yet sensible take on Spinosaurus as a bottom-punting predator. If you like speculative dinosaurs, which I'm guessing you do if you've sat through this whole video, I highly recommend you check out his book The Dinosaur Enlightenment, in which Nash shares his controversial, bold, and strangely plausible musings on a wide range of paleo subjects. A quick note on Megaraptor and hybrids given the interest that the subject has gotten over the past week. There are hybrids of all four species of robust monarchs, and of the Alar and Bakar. Most common is the Uktan and Zentar, as they are of similar size and diverged some 8 to 10 million years ago. These hybrids are usually from younger members of the species, ones that don't have much experience. As Uktan mate for life, their courtship rituals are elaborate, emotional, and complicated, and most Zentar get bored and leave before the bond comes to fruition. Kurujaku and Ordotaku share a habitat on Picardia, as do the Kurujaku and the two mainland species, but these bonds again only occur with inexperienced younger individuals. Hybrids are almost never viable, Uktan hybrids in particular, given their inclination to stick with their parents after a decade or more, often don't last long after driven from their mother. The few that are viable usually struggle to establish territory and attract mates. There are no established populations of hybrids anywhere in the known world. Thank you to everyone who submitted concepts of Chimera and Megaraptor and hybrids. I'm super impressed with the creativity I've seen. Future videos will cover further details of each species, but I hope this overview has given you a comprehensive understanding of each Megaraptoran and an understanding of why they have had such success in the context of Chimere. Thank you all for joining me in this series, and you can bet that there will be more Megaraptoran videos next year. December will cover the deer, a clade of mammals that thrives in the gardens of the titanosaurs, and a glimpse at one of the many continents beyond the known world. Thank you all for watching.
and I hope you have a great day. Stay fantastic. Cheers, folks.